This is To Hatch a Pod. Sit back and relax as Key, Corey, Greg, and Ashley talk about what's happening in and around To Hatch a Pod. It's To Hatch a Pod time. Key Budge, Ashley Whitmore today. Ashley, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Key? Doing good. Now, we've got two guests today. We've brought back, I think this is the third time to the podcast, our own farmer's market manager, Jessica Garner. She's getting to be a regular. She is, almost the new co-host. Jessica, <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. It's nice to have you back. We've had, we talked about the farmer's market. We did vendors and we, we brought in a guest. And then we wanted to do our musical entertainment and we brought in a guest last week. But we had one more guest we wanted to feature why don't you introduce our other guest today? We have another one of our musicians that will be playing at Farmer's Market joining us today, Miss Avery Napier. She has played with us previously in previous years, so we um, welcome her on the podcast today. Welcome to, to Hatchapod. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here today. Even though before today you had no idea we even had a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you are an old veteran on the music scene here in Tehachapi. How long have you been performing? So um, I've been performing, I'd say, for like three and a half years, but I've been playing for about seven. Okay. So let me ask, if you don't mind, how old are you? I'm 17. 17. So you started when you were 13, 14? Yeah. Performing? Mm -hmm. What does performing mean? You, we did a little test sound check before we started recording. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she's on point. Yeah. So... Um, what does this mean to you when you get a chance to perform? So I think getting a chance to perform is really exciting for me because it's like a way to just like show people like, uh, I could say talent, but like just something I'm very passionate about, like something I love doing and I've always loved doing, like singing and playing guitar. It's really fun to just like get people excited about it. People that love music, love hearing stuff they've never heard before, older kind of music. I just love to range from any kind of music to just gives people like a good nostalgia feel or like, they like to hear new music, so I think it's really exciting for them because I play a lot of different genres. And so just to tease, Avery's going to sing for us here in a little bit. You've kind of teased about making people feel good and nostalgic. So who are your musical influences? So I'd say my top of, um, like, artists it, I would like that I'm inspired by would be Mazzy Starr. Um, I love her music because, like, it's definitely something that I, like, I would relate my voice and my sound to. Um, and then as it goes for like newer artists, I would say Claro. I saw her in concert. I also love The Cure, seeing them in concert tomorrow. So that's really exciting. I, lo I love like older music, but like putting my own twist onto it. So I like to play the Beatles. I'll play um, some Beach Boys. I love playing like, uh, like the Americas, like Ventura Highway, stuff like that. And a lot of newer artists like the Lumineers. It kind of ranges from everything, but I like to put my own twist on it. So Jessica... Avery is a returning artist. What was it about her that said, hey, we got to make sure we bring her back again this year? She has, like you said, she's been on the musical scene in Tehachapi for several years now. She always brings like a really nice light energy to Farmer's Market. Um, the kids love listening to her. They, I see little little guys and gals dancing and stuff. She's got a beautiful voice. She's just very easy to listen to. It's very unique her voice and it's it'll be exciting for the podcasters to uh hear that i'm really enjoying what we did a couple of shows ago you know having django in and now having avery in where we get to to showcase some talent other than just talking about things that we actually get to hear it so we're excited about what you're going to share with us let's twist it over to the farmer's market because what we're going to hear from Avery are some of the sounds that we're going to hear out at the farmer's market. And why is it, Jessica, that we have integrated music into the farmer's market? It creates a nice ambiance. Like people like being able to mill around, but also hear some beautiful music being played. Um, it keeps people, it draws people into Centennial Plaza to kind of hang out, um, chit chat with each other, get to listen to whatever musician we have that week, maybe grab a bite to eat. It just kind of rounds out our farmer's market by providing some entertainment aspect. A nice thing this year too, in Centennial Plaza, not only will we have the musicians playing um, and of course the hot food vendors, uh, but people can also go over or their kids and go do a free craft in Centennial Plaza. So it's all kind of a one-stop shop there when you're ready to just kind of sit down and relax after you've got your produce for the week and everything. 
So Avery, what is it like for you when you go to the farmer's market based on last year, that energy you feel, do you, do you feel the energy from having the, the audience there in front of you? I think it definitely brings like a lighter appeal to the, like what's going on. It's just like, like she was saying, it has a lot to do with like ambiance. And I think for me, when I'm hearing other people play, um, like it definitely brings a lighter mood to the, like what you're doing, like the farmer's market is already such a fun, like attraction for people to go to but I think when they're hearing live music it definitely like gives like a softer more fun appeal for them it's like something if they if they're they can watch they can listen either way it's still like fun for them now how about when you're performing and you've got people out there in front of you does that help or hinder you in your performances I think definitely having like familiar faces I mean growing up in a such a small town I tend to see the same faces at like all, all the gigs I play and it's like it's very like it's really sweet that like people show up to like support me, but it's also like fun to see new faces and people that are interested to hear my music. So yeah, I do. I definitely think I like having like a big audience. It makes me excited. No yeah. nerves, huh? Definitely get some nerves, but I think um, having the same faces around a lot definitely helps like with the nerves because I like can expect that there's not going to be people I haven't met before, people I haven't seen. It's all people that I love and. I feel like it's it's nothing too crazy because it's been the same thing like in touch. We I don't know if that makes sense, but well, how long when when you start to play before all of a sudden you you shed the nerves and they're gone? Does it just take a few seconds or does it does it take a a couple of songs? I think I'm most nervous when like a few hours before I when I when I finally I think it's the setting up and making sure the sound is right. Like, the wind here is crazy, and that's always affecting. I don't know. I'm more, more nervous about, like, the sound check and making sure everything works out other than, like, playing. I feel like um, since it's something I love doing so much that it's, like, more exciting for me, if anything. Like, I still have those nerves, but I feel like it's more about the little things. It, so it's it's the, that's, that's pretty cool. It's about the setup, making sure everything is right for the performance. And then it's like, yeah, I'm just going to play. Mm -hmm. But you just got to make sure you check all the boxes. Everything's plugged in right. You know, and you're able to just go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Can we uh, ask you to maybe play us a little something? Yes, of course. So this first song I'll be playing is called Pretty Girl by Claro. Beautiful. Thank you. Now, what in, what about that song 
do you take away? What do you, what do you love about that song that makes you want to perform it? So I think that song, like, I've loved since I was in middle school because it was very popular when I was, I'd say, in, like, 7th or 8th grade. Uh, like, her music definitely got me into, like, wanting to sing and play more, like, because she started at a young age and started writing. So she was, like, inspired me a lot. But I think the song in particular, it's, like, really cool. Like, um, I love, like, the... Uh, like, I love the chords in it, and I feel like it's definitely, like, my style. It's something that I would, like, if I um, think of a song that I love playing, I, I'd i probably say that one. I just feel like it goes good with, like, um, my style in general. It was really easy to listen to. Very much so. It was just kind of chilled me out, just relaxed me. And obviously the lyrics don't speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> Is this something you plan on? I know you said, you know, she started writing young and stuff like that. Do you kind of write your own stuff too? Or are you kind of getting into that? So it's definitely a goal of mine at some point to like write music and I don't know, try to go somewhere with it. I've tried writing songs. It's definitely something that I would love to do. I think I'm easing into it. Just like trying to find my voice in that sense. Just like figuring out what my style would be or just, I would love to do that, but it's just kind of easing into it at the moment. That's great. Jessica, so you've got, how many different artists are going to be performing at Farmer's Market? 10. Okay, so you've got 10 mm -hmm. and we're running 12 weeks. So you've got an artist coming back, one or two artists. That yeah, are there's return. two artists that'll be returning. Okay, and let's, let's tease the Farmer's Market. Let's dates and times. It is every Thursday starting June 1st from 4 to 7 p.m. on Green Street in downtown Tehachapi. And we had a huge turnout last year. With the people that, that came, what, what was the feedback you got from the community as far as like the musical entertainment and what that meant uh, to the entire event? Um, a lot of people enjoyed the musical entertainment. The biggest thing I got from feedback wise from music was that they wanted um, a wider variety of artists so this year we tried to expand um we have some younger artists we have some older artists they come from all different genres um so we're trying to give a wider variety this year now yeah. if people want to come here avery at the farmer's market what date can they come to see her i'm playing july 13th so it's july 13th now when you put together a set list for a performance like that how far out in advance do you start thinking about your set list and how many songs you're going to play? So I would say probably like I would try to. Sometimes I do things a little, little last minute, but just how I work best. But I'd say like I try my best to like a month in advance just so I can have more time to like really just pick out my best songs and play them over, which sounds like I'm more comfortable with. But um, this year I'm going to try to do more like songs I've never done before just because I feel like the gigs that I do do in Tachipi tend to be the same song. So I want to try to mix it up. So I'd say I'm going to try to start start now, even though it's like two months in advance, just so I can really like get down on those songs. Yeah. And then as it goes for amount of songs, it just depends on how long I'm playing. But um, I think I'm, I'll probably be playing for like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So... I'll probably be doing around like 25 to 30 songs. You're just, kidding. That many songs? Yeah. It, it, I could have that. Usually I have that many planned. But that doesn't necessarily mean. Because I like to drag out songs sometimes. Because okay. like if people are walking by, they might want to hear it longer. <laughs> so um, I, I do plan more songs. But that doesn't mean I'll do all of them. It just depends. How many songs would you say you have in your repertoire just overall? I don't know. I'd probably say like. I've done so many random covers because, like, I'll just look up the chords for it and then learn it real fast. So I feel like I could do mm, probably over 100, like, not memorized, not memorized, but did you mean memorized? Or? No, that's oh, fine. okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it just depends on the event I'm going to or, like, I feel like for my, like, top songs that, like, I have down, probably around 20. That's but, great. Yeah. That's a lot of songs. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know that I could go to a hundred songs in my playlist of all my favorite artists of all time, <laughs> but for you to be able to say that you've been able to perform, even though it's like not committed to memory, but a hundred songs, is, that's a big catalog. Oh, did you mean like how many I've played at gigs? Well, no, just how oh, many okay. you like to play or wow. how many, you know, uh -huh. you might not perform them in front of, 
you know, folks, but it's like, it's a, it's another song that you could pull if you really wanted to. Yeah. I think for me, I like to, um, like for artists, I feel like they usually stick with like their same style. So once I learn one of their songs, it's like, I want to like learn their other songs because they're like similar. So I think that's why there's so many for me to pick from. I don't know. I've never had a musical bone in my body. So (laughs) when I hear about, I mean, for me, I translate it to playing sports and I could pick up things because I enjoyed playing sports. You you enjoy music and you're able to pick it up. Do you listen from sound or can you read sheet music or is it just um, all ear? I I can't I can't really do it from ear. I wish that's so cool when people have that talent because I have friends that do that. It's crazy. I think it's so awesome. But for me, I just I stick with reading sheets and um, I'll even like watch YouTube tutorials because I feel like that's how I learned. And definitely during quarantine, I did that a lot. Like YouTube videos saved me. So if anyone wants to learn, it's definitely it's very helpful. That's what I do a lot. I print my sheet music for gigs. So like if you see me out there, I'll have like a binder. It's just so I can refer to the chords and everything. Or if I just learned it like the other day, I'll have it. But I would definitely stick with like learning chords, like just memorizing them and then reading them. Very no good. more VHS tutorials. No. <laughs> no I, so YouTube, you t- I mean... I shouldn't be surprised to hear YouTube as a tool for you because, I mean, I, I had to go work on something at the house and I had to look it up. Where do I go? My encyclopedia is YouTube now. So, but you don't even think about all the different things that are there, but here you're able to channel your music and pull from YouTube and it's a teaching tool for you. Yeah, I feel like there's so many cool artists out there that are willing to like share with people what they like how they learned and so I think there's so much out there that like if anyone wants to learn you don't need to go pay for lessons necessarily if you don't want to like there's so many resources out there online that like can help you because that's definitely helped me through learning like chords that were difficult I feel like there's a lot of youtubers out there that are willing to like teach you and it's like a very simple method so I've definitely done that a lot now do you have are you out on social media are there ways that people can follow along your musical journey yeah, so I do have um, uh, an Instagram page called Avery's Music, and I'm not very, I want to be more active on there, um, but yeah, I do post like cover, a lot of covers on there, like on the Instagram stories and like actual page. Yeah, so you can reach me on there. Now, what kind of feedback do you get from the community when they're, you know, after after a gig? Do people come up and, or do they come up to you in another day and just say hey I, I really enjoyed it or yeah there has been a few times it's really funny to me like it's so cool that people like remember me it's like a weird feeling because I know it's attached to me but it's like um like random people there's been like a time where a little girl came up to me in the store and she's like oh you were the girl that played at the farmer's market and it was just so cool to hear so stuff like that has happened or I'll get like comments on the Instagram posts about it and stuff which is super sweet of everyone See, that's pretty cool when you've got when when you at this age that you can be that it's like a role model moment where you've got another a little girl that looks up to you and go wow i remember her because she's the one that was performing and singing and that means that she connected to your music i mean that's that's pretty cool am i saying something that you've thought about or is that something maybe yeah, you didn't it definitely because i remember when i was little like i would see people playing music or just like it's something like I want to do that because I feel like there has been little kids who are like, I want to be a singer. And I feel like just seeing someone older than them is really cool. And like, you know, like, oh, I could do that too. And I feel like it's really cool. Like when she was saying like the little kids were dancing and stuff. And that was so sweet. Like that's what, honestly, it's moments like those that makes me want to keep playing. Like, because it just like inspires little kids. And that's so exciting for me. So like, um, yeah, definitely when little kids mention anything or they're like, can I play your guitar? Or like, Stuff like that. It's really sweet. Do you let people play your guitar? Yeah. I feel like I, I'm not weird on like, some people are very particular, but I, I think it's, I kind of share it around because this was actually given to me as a gift. So um, someone gave it to me. They didn't want it anymore. So I feel like if they're, it's just cool that they gave it to me. So I feel like I should share it with other people. She has an artist spirit. She does. I mean, that's because usually people get very possessive of their things. <laughs> and to have that, someone gave it to me, so you're not afraid to share that. That's, again, that's the spirit of a true artist. Now, did you put the birds on the frets? No, I didn't. They came like this. It, it's this, really cool. This guitar is like, they're known for doing like cool stuff like that. Very cool. 
What kind of a guitar do you have? So this is a Paul, like, Reed Smith, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, this was given to me by um, a family friend. He's really big on music. And he just felt like I needed to have it, which is super cool. And it's a very, like, nice guitar. So this is definitely what's helped me through gigs because it's like I can plug it in. So it's if I don't have to mic it up or anything. So I feel like this guitar is what got me started because I had all my other gigs, I would just play ukulele or, like, play acoustic, but it wasn't plugged in. So it's just nice having. And then I got sponsored by... Um, Castle Look Home, or yeah, Castle Look Homes, like my all my sound system, like yeah, they sponsor my sound system. Which shout out to them, they're so sweet. But it's just cool because I feel like our community comes together and just they like they they want to see people improve and shine. So it's really cool that everyone has been helping me out in that sense. Yeah. How many different musical instruments do you play? So I play acoustic and electric and uh, ukulele, and then I started learning drums, but I didn't really keep up on it. Okay. I'm sure your mom and dad are happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you play another song for us? Yeah, of course. So this is Fade Into You by Mazzy Star. Trip back to the 90s there. <laughs> Was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, do I date oh, myself yeah. every time? Yeah. <laughs> so how, um, in the future, what are we What are we looking at with Avery Napier? Are you? Are we going to see you doing singing competitions? Or what do you want to do? Is this, or what, what would you like to do as a profession? Is, is it going to be following through with music? So I think I'm going to either do a film production or music production. So my, my dream goal is to work on, like, music video sets. Obviously, I would love to be the one singing, but it's definitely hard to get out there. But um, I do have, like, a passion for film and stuff like that, so that's something I'm going to major in. I mean, I will definitely keep up on music. I would love to start writing and put myself out there more. I want to be active on, like, social media more because that's definitely a good way to put yourself out there. Yeah, I would love to, like, record a song one day, put myself out there, play live more, do more gigs and stuff like that. 
you can why not you you can you can record now i mean with the self-publishing that you're able to do and and do you have a youtube channel no that's definitely something on my goal list too is just to make a youtube channel and try to post covers or even if i write music to just put myself up self out there because your social media is a very good platform to I feel like that's like one of the biggest ways to do it these days is just to especially using like Instagram and stuff like that where it's like quick videos but they're like meaningful so I want to try to put myself out there more in that sense and my goal is to yeah write music and put it out there at some point now video production okay kind of piqued my my ear there since I, I do some of that I don't do the music side but what, what got you interested on the video production aspect? I'm not, I've always loved like making my own little videos. I'm a technology commissioner at my school, so I'm, I help run the Instagram account. So I love, also love like marketing and stuff like that because I, like, I feel like um, promoting things is very important to me. So I think, and I love seeing like the behind the scenes of music videos. That's always so interesting to me, like how everything goes down. And like producing and or even recording music. I feel like behind the scenes stuff to me is so interesting because there's so much behind it that people don't know about. And I like want to see what's behind it because I feel like that's so cool. So just to like find a job that isn't known and to like do something that is like behind the scenes is really cool to me. Ashley, you've been out at the farmer's market over the, the past few years that the city's taken it over. What is the, the musical aspect and what's your takeaway? What do you see when you're out there and over the past few years as, as this music has grown here in Tehachapi? Well, we really try and first off, keep it local. Uh, local musicians keep it a little smaller, uh, either soloist or duet and everything. Just because, I mean, we don't want a huge, it's not a concert you're coming to and everything. We want the full ambiance. We want, like I said, it's it's a evening out that we want you to not only just get your produce, but come over and enjoy yourself and enjoy it with the family and stuff and being able to hear local musicians and then find out where they're playing throughout town afterwards. Um, so you can see them again if you really like them and switch it up every week. So that way, you know, there's a little something for everybody and maybe you find something new that you didn't know you'd like. The farmer's market is a, is a fun vibe. What we've made, turned it into over the last couple of years. It's each. a vibe. That's that's exactly what it is. It, it, <laughs> it's a good it, vibe. I always think about, for me, a farmer's market that I really enjoy is going out to San Luis Obispo. They're Thursdays in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's always cool. And they've got music playing on like each corner, like a block away. And then with all the food vendors and, and the stores that are open, so you get to interact with everything. But it is an energy out on the streets. But without the music, I don't know that you get that. Definitely you know, I mean, you, you go for. Like oh, it yeah. changes it for sure. Yeah. It makes it that family event. It makes it everything that you just talked about as the goals. The music kind of takes it to that level. I don't know. I mean, you definitely go there for the produce. You want to check out all the fresh um, uh, farm, uh, you know, s um, produce that's out there and check in with the vendors. But it, you just kind of, if it's quiet, and you're walking down, it's just regular street noise. I don't know. It's, it's not special. And this turns it into something more special for me. Yeah. That's my own feel. Well, if you want regular street noise, come between four and five. Because the music <laughs> doesn't the start until play. five. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. But okay. if you want okay. the full package, come at five o'clock because that's when the music gets started. Uh, Jessica, so let's let's throw back to Farmer's Market. What, let's, let's talk a little bit about the vendor side. We're talking about a lot about the music, but it really is about, it is a farmer's market. What are we going to see out there uh, on the street, on Green Street? We have several produce vendors this year. I think we have a, like a total of 11. Um, we have a lot of packaged food vendors this year. Um, anything from you can get your meats, vegetables, some fruits. You can also get cotton candy and popcorn. Um, we've definitely tried to make sure that there's a wide variety of vendors there's several bakers that are going to be there, so you can get a sweet treat um, to take home or eat while you're there. And we have a few craft vendors this year as well. Very nice. And then also some of our brick and mortars, the stores are also going to be offering some specials. Yeah, we have um, a few shops that have decided to have either a discount or be open late. 
um, during farmer's market. We want to draw people into farmer's market, have them check out our area, and then also go visit our brick and mortars because they are quite the staple here in Tehachapi. We definitely need to support them as well. And if people want to get that information on which brick and mortars are joining us, whether they, you know, have a discount for the day or what specials they have for food. Um, on our website, liveuptohatchapi.com slash farmers market, we have a section on there. They can click on a link. It'll take them to a Google map that shows them exactly where those stores are located. And if they click on it, it'll show them what special they've got for the night. And then we'll have the QR code out there on the street too yes. for day of, so you can go right to it. Mm-hmm. And we don't have a ton of brick and mortars that are involved, but those that are have put some thought into having some nice specials to off. make sure when you're on Green Street, turn the corner, head over to Robinson, go down to Hatchby Boulevard because all of the neighboring businesses within walking distance, or I shouldn't say all of them, but some of them are going to either have extended hours, Mm -hmm. specials, discounts, and they want to be a part of your Thursday evening. Yeah, yeah. Wild Roots is one that I'll throw out there. She has put a lot of thought into um, how to market herself and get people drawn into her sh- her shop. She's staying up open later. I believe she's offering 10% off discount during farmer's market hours. And then she also has these cute Tehachapi, California totes that she's um, gotten made so that when you're shopping at the farmer's market, you have somewhere to put your fruits, your vegetables, your jar of honey you bought. So I think that is a very creative way of drawing people to her shop beforehand before they come over to Farmer's Market. Oh, that's nice. All right, Avery, let's let's talk about your gigs and the places you play. Where are some of the other places around the greater Tehachapi area that you get a chance to play at? So I'm pretty sure I'm playing at 4th of July again this year at City Park. Um not sure what time yet or if it's official yet, but I did play two years ago. And that was, like, one of my favorite gigs I've ever done because there's a lot of people there. And it was, like, really fun. Um, I also have done a bright – I played at Bright Creek Farm, like, at the family dinners or, like, the farm dinners, sorry. And um, that was really cool because it's just, like, a fun event because they're, like, eating dinner. But it's, like, I'm playing background noise, which is always my favorite – uh, uh, because it's just like like you were saying, ambiance is really important. So I think gigs like that are always fun. I've played at Coffee Mill or Commons Cafe, and that one was really fun. And then I've also done um, like a realtor's event. So yeah, I've done some local events. That's around. so you're getting a little variety. So what's your favorite place to play? Um. My favorite place to play is a farmer's market. Yeah, right. She didn't yeah. say that, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. She didn't want to get booted off the list but there. It really is. It's so fun because, like, there's so much to do. Like, when I'm done singing, I could go get, like, some good food. Or, like, I think it's a, the farmer's market's super cool because it brings people out to, like, small businesses are really important, especially here in Tachby because we don't have, like, big um, companies. So I think the farmer's market is a good way to show people to shop small and, or, like, like support the small vendors and stuff like that. So that's why I really enjoy the f- farmer's market. We have a new spokesperson for the farmer's market. Yeah, she <laughs> could totally market yeah. for us. As you think back over the last few years and playing your progression in music, now that you're you're able to, to listen to something, you find an artist, and then you kind of listen to their whole their catalog or maybe the whole album. I mean, now we have albums again, right? Albums are a thing. It used to be CDs, and now it's albums again. Well, I suppose so, but I don't think you physically get them anymore. It's you just, can. you know, on... I buy, you buy, I buy Oh, them. okay, okay. Okay, you, got, you buy vinyl? Yeah, I have a record player. Okay. I probably See? have like 50 vinyls. See, it's generational. So we, we're coming back to history's repeating itself, <laughs> and you can actually pick up vinyl again. So, <laughs> okay, so do you, do you uh, like listening to vinyl? I do, but my record player isn't the nicest, so okay. it doesn't do the... I'd say... The older records that I've gotten from thrift stores and my grandma's giving me always sound better than the new ones. Like the new ones you get off Amazon do not sound nearly the same. Okay. And I hear artists talk about that they mm-hmm. can hear something different on vinyl that they hear on a digital recording. Yeah. And there's something that um, that relates to them. So I'm, I'm interested with, with that. So when you listen to like some of the older uh, vinyl records, um, what are some of the artists that you've acquired along the way? So I have, um, I have like 
four Beach Boys records. They're forever my favorite. I've seen them in concert a few times. Um, but I feel like their their records are special to me because I've had them since I, that was like the first record I got. And I feel like their music, that's just their like signature touch is like hearing on a vinyl. Like I don't really know how to explain it, but it's just like it just sounds so much better and I feel like their vibe <laughs> I don't know how to explain the sound of a vinyl, but I feel like it sounds very like them. But like as it goes for like um, newer vinyls, they just don't sound because the newer vinyls I'm used to hearing them on my phone. So like okay, that's where it's like the difference. I say it's it's almost like when you listen to some of those the vinyl, you can hear some of the rawness. Yes, versus yeah, things are a little bit too clean and right too clean and polished for the digital downloads Because like in the 70s and 60s i don't think they were using like the auto-tune we're using nowadays because there's so many singers that aren't actually real and raw like in the recording so i think that has to do a lot with hearing older music that hasn't been remastered like it always says on vinyl or like spotify remastered 2000 whatever but like on the vinyl it's like the original piece good vibrations yeah, yeah. right yeah exactly <laughs> exactly um, and I can remember when you were talking about the Beach Boys, I've seen them in concert. I used to own some of their vinyl. Um, so, you know, and that's a generation before me. But, I mean, it's funny how a, a group that started in the 60s, you know, here we are some 60 years later, and they still are, you know, relevant, you know, to you, you know, where you can hear them and you can enjoy and appreciate music from the 60s yeah i think it's like um teenagers now are i wouldn't say they're like old souls but like a lot of kids are finding like it's super like they they enjoy older things like like vinyls and such because it's like um i feel like a lot of things now are like it's just like everyone's doing the same thing and i think they find their own thing when it comes to like and like record players became very popular and so then these people like, oh, maybe I should start liking older music. And people reached like and found more older artists. So I think definitely bands like the Beatles and the Beach Boys have gotten really popular in the past few years again for like teenagers. Yeah, it's it, it's it's weird how the, the those sounds generationally here we come around to, to a group and they're popular. They're they're in you're getting introduced to new music, which is old music, but stuff that moved, you know, whether it was my generation or my parents' generation, comes back around again. Oh, yeah. We can't go to the beach without putting on the Beach Boys as we come right towards the ocean. If you're on the one, you got to have the Beach Boys on. That's exactly right. So, Avery, anything else that maybe we haven't we haven't talked about that you, you want to share with the, the listening audience? Um, I feel like um, I would say that, like, in general, I feel like my um, music path has really, like, been beneficial growing up here because I've had so much help from the community, like, doing this and getting, um, like, asked to do the farmer's market again and stuff like that. I feel like it's just so cool because everyone remembers each other here, and it's just, like, cool to have, like, so many opportunities here. Even though it's small, we might not have as many opportunities other places. I feel like I'm still given so many cool opportunities, like... So I feel like um, just, like, it's been really nice having a good community that's supportive of music has been really good. All right. So, and our musical director, Jessica Garner, oh, I mean farmer's market manager, <laughs> slash musical director. <laughs> so, um, and I asked you this last time when we had uh, Django on, and we talked about um, you get a chance to, I guess, kind of audition the artists. You're looking for, you know, their sound you were already exposed to her music. Yeah, I didn't have to search for Avery because we got to experience her beautiful music last year. So when she applied again, it was like, yep, definitely we want Avery back. Perfect. Okay, so let's let's talk about, uh, once again, let's remind everyone, Farmer's Market, when and where? Every Thursday, 4 to 7 p.m. downtown on Green Street. It starts June 1st and runs through August 17th. And go to liveuptohatchby.com. You can hit Farmer's Market. You can find the maps that Ashley talked about. Really easy to do. Plus, we'll have a QR code so you can find out where all the Farmer's Market specials are, where the vendors are. Will, do, are the musicians listed also? Yes, we have all of our vendors listed and then all the musicians and the dates that they're playing. And a okay. quick shout out to you to Kaiser Permanente for sponsoring all of our musicians. So they're all getting paid. 
So shout out to them and then shout out to Adventist Health for sponsoring the farmer's market. Wow. Yeah. So you're you're a professional so cool. musician. <laughs> yeah, totally. Paid gigs. <laughs> but I mean, a paid gig helps offset some costs, right? Yeah. I mean, it, those are the things that I think young artists, you know, it's when you make a little bit of money, it helps, mm-hmm. you know, and it kind of, that's, I think that's probably a cool thing too, because I know if you just love music, you just love to play and you probably get a chance to play, you just go do it. And you don't mm-hmm. even think about how much am I getting paid? Yeah. And then here, now you get the opportunity, thanks to Kaiser, that all of our artists are going to at least receive something to help offset their costs along the way. Yeah, super cool. All right. And then where can we follow you again? What's your Instagram? Uh, Avery's Music, but I'll be with a Z. So A-V-E-R-E-E-Z, music. All right. Yeah. Pretty cool. Anything in closing? Nothing for me. Nope, I'm good. Avery? I'm one. good. Thank you so much for having me. And now you know that we have a podcast. Yes, I'll be listening. <laughs> <laughs> and we appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing your music. And uh, once again, let's let's say that the two songs that you performed, let's give credit to those artists that originally performed these songs. So the first song I played was Pretty Girl by Claro, and the second song I played was Fade Into You by Mazzy Star. Okay, we want to make sure we give those, those music, musicians proper credit for sharing their music and influencing young Avery Napier. All right, folks, if you have a question based on today's show, you can send it to media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We'll do our best to answer that question. If it's something that you want to ask Avery, you can get it to us, and we will send it over to her so maybe she can send a response back. We appreciate the time you spend with us. Catch you again soon right here on Tehachapod. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi, featuring the community members who make this such a special place to call home. If you have a question or a thought you'd like to share, Email media at tehatchbycityhall.com. Thank you to Gary Mazzola for sharing his song, This is Tehachapi.